Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Blendina Worcester Brewster. How's that for a name? Now, as a doctor, I went under Dr. Worcester. I was born in the late 1800s and I spent probably 40 years here in Ridgefield. I lived on Governor Lounsbury's farm, the Hickories. Three generations of my family. My granddaughter is still living there today and working that farm. But being a farmer was not my claim to fame. No, I was one of the very first women doctors in Connecticut. I was known as a pioneer physician. And believe me, this was not easy at the time in the early 1900s. I was born in upstate New York, Geneva, New York. I lived on a farm. My father was a businessman. My mother was a housewife and I was very, very studious. And unlike most girls at the time, I thrived on math and science. Well, they didn't even teach science in the schools at that time. So I was basically self-taught. Well, I also loved working with elderly people and handicapped people and young children. And people would say to my mother, you know, Blendina would make a wonderful nurse. She loves working with people. And I would look at them. I was very young and I would say, look, if I am going into the medical profession, I'm not going to be a nurse. I'm going to be a doctor. And they would look at me and say, no, 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 Blendina, men are the doctors, women are the nurses, you're not even allowed to go to medical school. And at that time, it was true. When I graduated from high school, I went to Bryn Mawr, a very sophisticated elitist college for women near Philadelphia. I got a good education, but it was women oriented again. It was not the heavy duty math and science that I wanted. I decided I wanted to go and major in science at a really tough university. So I went to Radcliffe. I would have loved gone to Harvard, but women were not allowed to go to Harvard at that time. I really got a lot out of Harvard. They showed me that I had tremendous ability and that if I wanted to be a doctor, I should try to be a doctor. Well, at that time, there were only a couple of schools, we're talking the 1920s early, that would even consider women in the medical program. So the first hurdle I had was get into a program, the test, the interviews. It was so hard to get in because again, they only took a handful of women. I got in, I passed my first hurdle. I was going to be in pediatrics at John Hopkins University in Baltimore. And now I had my second hurdle past the courses. I was very bright. So passing the courses was not as hard as dealing with the men who were in the courses. They did not want women in the medical profession. They didn't feel comfortable with us. They felt that the few women that were there were inferior and shouldn't be there. They would not work with us as partners. But I did graduate top of my class, 1927, and I was so proud. I graduated with Vern Tassik. Dr. Tassik won the President's Medal of Freedom later on. She did all of her research on blue babies, open heart surgery for babies, open heart surgery in general, she was a pioneer. And thalidomide, how could people say that women doctors weren't going to make a difference? Well, now I'm ready for my third challenge, and that is getting a job. Who's gonna hire 
a woman. They're not used to women doctors. They don't feel that they are going to be capable or anywhere near as capable as men. Well, my first job was the toughest job I've ever had in my life. Went to Kentucky, Appalachia. I was a doctor on horseback. There were no roads, there were no cars where I had to go. The poorest of coal mine areas into the valleys and the woods on horseback, the people were uneducated. There was such poverty. There was no sanitation. There was so much education to do. I did this for almost two years. My next job was still not what I wanted. I wanted to be in a major hospital in an urban area like New York City. I got a job at Chapin School for Girls in New York City. There was not a more elitist school. So I went from the poorest of areas in Kentucky to the most elitist in New York City. I was a glorified nurse being a doctor. They really didn't need me. And I just kept applying and applying to various hospitals, hospitals where I could really use my skills. Well, I finally got into a sort of hospital, the Infirmary for Women in New York City. I was getting closer. I was working in pediatrics. I was doing what I was meant to do. And finally, I got a job at Bellevue a major medical facility. So much was going on there. It was in the worst neighborhood. We worked nonstop solving problem after problem. Again, I was working with women and children and I loved it. After a while, Bellevue merged with New York University Medical School. The administration at New York University came to me and said, Dr. Worcester, we would like you on our teaching faculty. You are such a good representative of women. You know how to teach. You know how to work with interns. They respect you. Oh, this is what I wanted. I wanted to be a role model for other women. I had no role models. I had no one to mentor me. I had no one to talk to about the medical profession. I love this. Well, while I was working at Bellevue, I got married to Carol Brewster, a very high powered lawyer in New York City. Well, both of us had very, very stressful jobs and we needed a place to, as they say, kick back and relax. And that was gonna be in Ridgefield. And that's where we came and we loved it. We purchased this wonderful farm, a hundred acres on Lounsbury Road. It had belonged to Governor Lounsbury. Now, of course he had the big magnificent mansion in the middle of town, the Lounsbury House, now known as the community center, but he also had a working farm. Well, when he sold the working farm, he sold it to a girl's school. They kept the farm going. And after the girl's school closed, it was for sale. We bought it. I enjoyed Ridgefield so much. I loved the town. I loved everything about it. My husband and I were on the conservation, the preservation committee. We wanted to keep Ridgefield the way that it was. I was the most avid reader. I spent more time at that Ridgefield Library and boy, could I play bridge. Eight, 10, 12 hours, nonstop bridge player. Lots of bridge players here in Ridgefield. I had two sons. They love Lounsbury Farm, which was called the Hickories. Now, my youngest son was named Jonathan. He went to theological school. He became the chaplain at Cornell for almost 40 years. He also became a very well-known sculptor of religious 
items. They're in the Vatican. They're in museums. They're in churches and synagogues all over the world. Oh, I was so proud of him. And then my other son was named after my husband, Carol Brewster. He went to Yale, he became a lawyer. He loved to travel, so worked for the government of Sudan for quite a while. Came back, was the Dean of Students at Dartmouth. Went on to become the president of Holland's College and then the president of Hobart and William Smith in Geneva, New York, where I was born. He loved this farm and his children grew up there as much as they could. I was so blessed. I have a granddaughter named Dina Brewster. She started out as a teacher, didn't really want to be a teacher. She wanted to follow her vision for the Hickory's farm. She turned these hundred acres into an organic farm, a cooperative, 200 members. She initiated 150 or so new species of plants. She brought in all sorts of animals. She raised sheep. She showed people about weaving and making yarn and making candles and soap. And she brought in these people from all other areas with organic goods to talk about what they were doing. There was something going on at the Hickories all that time. There were school tours, there were birthday parties, there were farm tours for the little kids, for fundraising, for different nonprofit organizations. They would hold these country dinners, 50, 60 people at a long table, eating the most wonderful organic food just as the sun went down. There wasn't a holiday that they didn't celebrate. It was an educational facility. There were lectures and demonstrations and workshops. People would come from New York and all over to go to the hickories. My favorite part of the hickories was the sheep stroll. Just before the holidays, the Christmas holidays, the sheep would come in from the pasture into the barn to give birth. And Dina set it up so everyone had bells and there was a walkway and they would ring the bells and cheer and help the sheep get into the barn to give birth. It was, it was very, very emotional. So I was proud. I got honorary degrees from different universities. I published, I got various medical awards. Um, what I was most proud of though is my family and the Hickories and how three generations could make a difference here in Ridgefield. But my final message to you out there is that it is so tough to be the first or one of the first in some area. People are gonna put you down. They're gonna be naysayers. They're gonna bully you. They're gonna tell you you can't do it. It's not worth it. You do not listen to them. When they told me I should be a nurse, no. I said, I'm gonna be a doctor. And I was, and I'm proud of it. Well, thank you for listening. And I hope you tune in next time. I think you're going to hear about a wonderful woman, Mildred Gilmore Wolforth. This woman was the first on the historical site committee in Ridgefield. But this woman was one of the first women writers about serial crimes, crimes of passion. It was all men writers. She wrote nonfiction and fiction about the most serious crimes that have ever taken part in our country and abroad. Thank you.